Good afternoon, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Karen Kozia Phillips. C News is live at noon. And I'm Nasira Mohammed with Sport. Helping the news at this time, an autopsy conducted on an 11-month-old baby has found that she died from blunt force trauma. Now, according to police, last Tuesday they received reports that the child, Jadea Douglas, was taken to the Mount Hope Pediatric Intensive Care Unit with extensive brain damage. The parents said the child's father prepared a bottle for the baby and gave her one drop of a sleep medication, melatonin, as she was having trouble falling asleep. It was reported that Judea fell asleep around 8.10 p.m. and was barricaded by pillows on a bed in the bedroom of the family home. Upon checking later, the girl's mother revealed the child was not on the bed. And after a frantic search, they discovered Judea head first in a clothes basket, which was located to the side of the bed. She was also unresponsive. The mother attempted to perform CPR on the child. However, this was unsuccessful. The child was then taken to hospital. Up to last Friday, officers returned to the Mount Hope Pediatric Hospital ICU and were informed that several brain stem death tests were performed on the Judea, but all came back unresponsive. Little Judea was subsequently declared brain dead and disconnected from the respirator. She was announced dead on Monday. Investigations are continuing. The principal of the Mayoral Government Primary School has requested a further seven-day suspension for the student who allegedly assaulted his classmate and broke his arm. Sources within the Ministry of Education told CNews the minister has not yet signed off on the request and he is the only person who can grant the extension. The child was initially given seven days suspension following the incident. According to the ministry, the investigation into the actual cause of the incident is still ongoing. And there's a new twist which may see the school's principal end up in some hot water. Seniors understands the principal did not follow the proper reporting procedures when the incident occurred and tried to keep it on the down low. This process, however, can take a long time depending on the outcome of the investigation. Further news now, Pan Trinbago's judicial review hearing is expected to begin in less than half an hour. Pan Trinbago is seeking legal action against the National Carnival Commission in light of an impasse over Panorama 2017. But just to give you an idea on what's taking place, on Wednesday, Pan Trimbego said it is, look, it is looking to take legal action against the National Carnival Commission in light of an impasse over Panorama 2017. In January, NCC Chairman Kenny De Silva confirmed his organization would be taking control of the financial aspect of this year's Panorama show, a responsibility which was previously held by Pan's governing body, Pan Trimbego. The NCC's move to control the financial aspect arose from several reports of financial mismanagement of funds by the Pan Trinbago executive. But Pan Trinbago's acting president, Richard Foto, says he's tired of the games surrounding their organization. And despite this, Panorama semifinals will take place on Sunday. Well, we now go back to Ian Wason. Ian Wason, good afternoon. Can you tell us uh, how the outcome of the judicial hearing is expected to affect Sunday's uh, Panorama semifinals. Hi, Karen. Well, previously the president of and chairman of NCC did in fact said that whether Panorama is controlled by Pantin Diego or not, Panorama will take place this year. So they have already given indication that they would step in and take care of that. But I don't think it would come to that because remember Pantrin Bego had already started with the prelim judging and even up to this morning at our studios the draw for this weekend took place. So that's not really a large concern right now. However, Pantrin Bego is concerned over their financial concern, uh, control over uh, over their, their issues. So that's the main issue. Of course it's going to that they are taking this seat, this matter very seriously, even that their president was still on sick leave. He has sweet old here and getting ready for the sort of hard work. Okay, thank you very much, Ian. Of course, we'll have more on that story in a sub subsequent newscast. If you're watching the CNews Live report at noon, remember you can keep up to date with all the latest news on our website at ctvtt.com. Or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at CNews Live.
to other news now. Well, a real man would walk. This from former Port of Spain Mayor Louis Leasing in response to statements by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley during his conversation with the Prime Minister in Maloney on Monday. Mr. Leasing spoke with CNews today. He said in 2016, Raymond Timkey was forced to resign as Port of Spain Mayor for statements he made against women. Now Mr. Leasing wants the Prime Minister to step down. He said the Prime Minister tends to speak off the cuff and in doing so makes critical mistakes. In this context, I am demanding on behalf of all the women folk in this country and all the people of this country that the Prime Minister walks the same plank. Whether people want to accept it or not, if Tim Key was guilty, the Prime Minister is equally guilty and no combination of words by way of a lengthy apology will suffice. And as it relates to the defending of the Prime Minister's statement by the Attorney General and the Women's League of the PNM, Mr. Leasing said he expected nothing different as he is the leader of their political party. But he called on them to consider what he termed the level of recklessness that's now common to the Prime Minister. I remember Dr. Rowley saying, and I quote, because I have seen no, and nothing anywhere else to refute it. That is one, but I also saw it on the television. I also heard it on the radio, where he said, she could jump high, she could jump low, she could drink this, she could drink that, she could bark at the dog, because I go ignore she can. I want to say to you, so that statement, as well as other statements, shows a common thread in the Prime Minister's thinking about women and women's rights. Attorney at law Prakash Ramada is urging people to stop posting graphic images of murdered victims online. Mr. Ramada said the sharing of these images online can be deeply harmful to the psyche of citizens, especially the victims' families. We have a right to know many things, but we don't have a right to know everything. We do not necessarily have to see these things. It doesn't help us. You know, if it is that, for instance, uh, it helps in the solution of a crime, um, as to the identity of the perpetrator. It's another issue, but just for the sake of seeing it, um, I, I, um, I think we must, the, the, the sensitivity of the family and, and relatives and friends must trump anybody's interest and curiosity. Asked whether the family members of these murder victims can take legal action against people who share the images, Mr. Ramadan said, unfortunately, the law does not make such a provision. Unfortunately, no. no. I mean, it's horrible, but they have no legal right, you know, because the person is now dead. Who would have had any right, if any at all? And the family has no right against reputation or anything like that. It really is grievous, but that's the, as far as I'm aware, there is no right. He also said the media plays a key role in sensitizing the public. Well, here's a look now at the weather forecast. Today's Saharan dust is leaving at Trinidad and Tobago, replaced by some sunshine, but also a couple of blusty showers are still expected, especially across the hills. It'll feel comfortable at 30 to 32 degrees Celsius as you watch those palms sway. But the strong trade winds of 20 to 25 knots will continue to whip the seas with the Rough Seas Bulletin asking all marine interests to exercise extreme caution. Waves of 3 meters to the Caribbean getting close to 4 meters out in the Atlantic with east northeasterly swells of 10 seconds. High tide at 3 is followed by low tide at 9.30. That's the latest weather and I'm Mitchell Justine Wallace. Protecting women from violent men and from domestic abuse is not an easy task. But never, never should blame for it be cast on the woman, the primary victim of this type of crime. So says attorney Richard Serju, who tells Mary Therese Bernard about protection orders and the response of the authorities to domestic violence. Attorney at law Richard Sergio says the protection order is a way to give women some peace from the person threatening violence on them. Mr. Sergio, however, says sometimes, even before a restraining order is acquired, the police response can leave something to be desired. Where the allegations are real, where 90% 90, 90 of the time they are real, the police fail to act. This is bureaucracy. You have a situation where the police, in their failure to act, compromise the rights of the applicant. I have a situation right now where the, the ex-husband or so went into the home, beat up the applicant, I think fractured her leg or something, goes up her mouth, tied their dog to a car and dragged the dog in the road, and the police casually say, well, go and get a medical and come back and see me. 
He says sometimes police do not investigate reports of abuse even when they actually see the wounds on the victim, and this can continue the trauma of the brutalized woman. Mrs. Sergio says that if an applicant socializes with a person she has the order against, then this serves to deflate the order and the respondent can go to court to have the order removed. With respect to recent events, the attorney said that the Prime Minister's comments on home abuse were not acceptable. I would condemn such a statement in the highest possible terms. It is a flagrant and blatant disrespect for our women who and such a statement should not emanate from any masculine who is far less from our Prime Minister, who is supposed to be a role model for the entire country. Because it is biased, it is not true, it is not based on any detailed statistics that women make all choices. On what basis has a study been done to say that the victims of domestic violence make all choices? Where, 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 is that, where does that come from? He notes that battered women's syndrome is highly important in dealing with women's maltreatment and must be taken into account when attempts are made to help those who are being abused. There's this issue of battered women's syndrome and nobody is talking about that. These women are victims and there's a psychological impact that is perpetrated against them and nobody is doing anything about it. And when the Prime Minister now comes and makes such a reckless statement without any justification and or statistical data, it doesn't help. As a matter of fact, it makes women feel even more demotivated or has the potential to suffer them over. Mr. Sergio says the protection of a woman cannot rely solely on the woman's choices and her protection is something which society must take seriously from laxity in the protection order system to the authorities providing support for her. Mary Therese Bernard, C News. To other news now, police have recaptured a prisoner who escaped from the Sangre Grande police station on Tuesday. C News understands Tristan Moses was found at around 1 o'clock this morning sleeping in a makeshift camp in some bushes not too far from the station. Moses is expected to be charged with escaping lawful custody and assaulting a police officer. And police are investigating a shooting incident that took place in Valencia this morning. According to reports, the man was taken to the Sangre Grande Hospital about an hour ago. In some steel pan news, fascinators will be the first steel band on stage when the curtain for the National Panorama Semi-Finals start on Sunday, February 12th at the Queen's Park, Savannah, Port of Spain from 9 a.m. The band from El Dorado, along with Our Boys of Tobago, which will be performing at position number 20, top the preliminary round. And you can join CTV at 1 o'clock to find out more about the pan draw. Well, now we have Nasira Mohammed, who's going to tell us what's coming up in sports news. Well, Karen, the Red Force had a victory last night and it secured them a semi-final berth in the regional Super 50 tournament. In cricket, the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force played something like their best game to date in the defense of their regional Super 50 title and cruised past Kent Spitfires by five wickets in Antigua. Ravi Rampo led the bowling first up, taking three wickets as Kent struggled to 194 all out in 46 overs. He had support as Seema Roshan Primus chipped in with two wickets while left-arm spinner Kerry Peer also had two bowling for TNT. In their turn at the crease, the TNT batsmen held things together and avoided any major collapses like the last time the two teams met. And in the end, Jason Mohammed returned to form with an unbeaten and timely 78. Skipper Dinesh Ramdin also shaped well for his 56. And in some other news now, coach of defending Super League champion Santa Rosa FC, Keith Lukloy, is confident the newly promoted, newly proposed Trinidad and Tobago Super League will get the approval from the TTFA to form the entity that replaces the former National Super League. Ken Fuentes has more after speaking with Lucloy about the latest news. Lucloy says the league was formed on the 13th of December last year by 13 clubs and will start with 22 teams with another two to be added via the TTFA Champion of Champions tournament. The league will be split in two, with League 1, the Premier Division, comprising of 14 teams, and League 2, the Championship Division, comprising of 10 teams. Lucloy says the key difference between the previous league and the new league will be in its structure. Now with this new um, association, uh, the 24 clubs are all equal part, part owners of, um, of the league. 
all of the finances are transparent on the table, so we all know. Uh, we intend to make it a, a viable commercial enterprise to generate profit for the clubs because profit will allow the clubs to grow. And uh, we have control over the politics and the direction of the league. The former national player says there are just a few issues to be sorted out with the TTFA. And he remains confident this will be worked out for them to start the new league on time. There's a TTFA board meeting on the 15th where we expect our constitution to be an application to be um, approved by the TTFA board and then it goes to the TTFA general meeting which is the decision making body of the, of, of the TTFA where we will be formally accepted. So we expect a, a, a smooth transition and we certainly uh, hope there will be one because we just want to get on with our business. In the long term, Lukloy believes the new TTSL will be beneficial for local football. Well, Trinidad and Tobago football, uh, once we, we, we do our work properly, Trinidad and Tobago football could only benefit the, the entire um, genetics, if I could put it that way, of Trinidad and Tobago football is, is debt and dependency. <laughs> All the, the national association, the clubs, every, you know, the regional associations operate on a, a shoestring budget and uh, a red ink budget and um, we have determined that uh, we have some we have some founding and fundamental principles kent fuentes c sports well yesterday marked the opening of the secondary schools cricket league with flo trinidad taking the lead in highlighting women's cricket in trinidad and tobago and they showed that at the opening of the girls division one female cricketer on hand was former west indies women's captain marissa aguilera who encouraged the youngsters to be disciplined and obedient to their parents, teachers and coaches, and never stop striving for their dreams. The opening was followed by girls by a girls' North-South Classic. South batted first and posted 94 for 8 from their 20 overs, and North made easy work of their target, losing only one wicket in the process, reaching 95 for 1 from 15 overs. That's it for sport for today. Well, that's the CNews report at noon. I'm Karen Kozia Phillip. And I'm Nasira Mohammed. Remember, for up-to-date and breaking news throughout the day, you can visit the CNews website at ctvtt.com. To have a good afternoon.